So when I was working on this book, I went out to see Astro Teller, who runs Google X, Google's research arm. And uh, I was giving him the thesis of the book, and he went over to his whiteboard, and he drew this graph, very simple graph. The blue line across the middle, that's the average rate at which human beings and societies adapt to change over time. It has a positive slope, but it's very gradual. The white line is technology. So if you were at the left edge of this line, in the 11th century or the 12th century, nothing actually, you could go a whole century, nothing changed. You could go a whole century and your bow and arrow didn't get better. Between the 11th century and the 12th century, there was no bow and arrow 2.0. Then we got the scientific revolution, Copernicus, Galileo, Intel, Steve Jobs, the line starts to go straight north. And then Astro drew that little diamond there. I said, what's that, Astro? He said, that's where we are. We're at a point now where technology is actually changing faster than the average community and many people can adapt to. Then he went and got another magic marker and he drew that little dotted line there. And I said, what's that, Astro? He said, that's learning faster and governing smarter. That's the challenge. That's the challenge of graduates of this school. How do we learn faster and govern smarter to keep up with technology and where it's going? So my chapter on this subject, on the workplace, is called How Do We Turn AI into IA? How do we take artificial intelligence and turn it into intelligent assistance, A-N-C-E, intelligent assistance, A-N-T-S, and intelligent algorithms, so more people can live and learn at a higher pace of acceleration. So let me give you an example of each one. Intelligent assistance, my example is the Human Resources Department at AT&T, our big telecom company. 360,000 employees living on the edge of the supernova, competing with the biggest telecoms in the world, AT&T basically starts its year with its CEO, Randall Stevenson, giving a radically transparent speech about where the company is going, what markets it's going to be in, and what skills its workers will need that year to be effective at AT&T. Then they put all their employees, their managerial employees, 110,000, on their own in-house LinkedIn system. So they've got me there, Tom Friedman, in-house LinkedIn system. Turns out there are 10 skills you need to be an employee at at and that year, and I have seven of them. But I'm missing three. Then they partnered with Udacity, the online learning platform, and Udacity created nano degrees for all 10 skills. Then they came to me and said, uh, Mr. Friedman, here's the deal. We will give you up to $8,000 a year to take the courses for the skills you're missing. In fact, we heard you're interested in the Middle East. We'll pay for an archaeology course as well. In fact, we heard you're interested in globalization. If you want to take our $6,000 master's degree online from Georgia Tech for one year, we'll pay for that as well. Just one condition, Mr. Friedman. You have to take these courses on your own time, at home and on weekends, at night. If I say to them, you know what, I've actually climbed up one too many telephone poles. I, I'm really not up for this coursework. They will say to me, in that case, we have a wonderful severance package. But I won't be working for AT&T much longer. If I do take those courses, their social contract with me is they will offer me the new openings first. They won't go outside. AT&T's social contract with their employees is very simple. You can be a lifelong employee at AT&T, but only if you're a lifelong learner. If you are not a lifelong learner, you can no longer be a lifelong employee at AT&T. That social contract is coming to a neighborhood near you. That is the new social contract. The days when you could go to this fine business school, this university, and get a four-year degree and then spend that degree over the next 30 years, 
Forget about it. Lifelong learning is going to be the single most important competitive advantage in that world. It's by my friend Heather McGowan likes to say, never ask a kid today what you want to be when you grow up. Because whatever it is, it ain't going to be there in five years unless it's a policeman or a fireman. Only ask young people how you want to be when you grow up. How you want to be. Do you want to have an agile learning mindset? Do you want to be a lifelong learner? Because, as Heather puts it, in this world, learning is so much more important than knowing. Google knows everything. Biden knows everything. Who cares what you know? What's important is how quickly you can learn and translate that into value. My example of intelligent assistant, ANTS, is Qualcomm. So Qualcomm is a very important company. They made the inside of your iPhone, not Apple. They made the software and the chips, which is why Qualcomm is always suing Apple over patents. They have a 64-building campus in San Diego. Two years ago, they took six buildings, and they wired them completely with sensors. Every light, every door, every air conditioner, every pipe, every window, every computer. They beam all that data up to the cloud, and then they beam it down onto an iPad for their janitors on an incredibly user-friendly interface. So if I leave my computer on or a pipe bursts above my head, the janitor knows it before I do. And they just swipe down on their iPad and see either how to fix it or who to call. They've turned their janitors into maintenance technologists. Their janitors now give tours to foreign visitors. What do you think that does for the dignity of a janitor? That he or she now has an intelligent assistant enabling them to live at a higher pace of acceleration. My last example, intelligent algorithm is the partnership between the college board, the people who do the PSAT and SAT exams, which I know many of you had to take and suffer through, to get into an American college or a university. We take the PSAT in 11th grade to prepare for the SAT in 12th grade to see how good your verbal and math skills are. Many suburban parents, in the face of these exams, go out and hire a tutor from Kaplan, some other company, for $200 an hour to goose their kids' scores on the PSAT and SAT exam. A completely rigged game. A completely rigged game. Because if you come from a family that can't afford that, or you didn't even know you could do that, you're at a real disadvantage. So three years ago, the college board that administers the PSAT partnered with Sal Khan from Khan Academy, the online learning platform, and they've created an intelligent algorithm for free PSAT and SAT prep. Next year it'll be for GREs uh, as well. Now what happens is I take my PSAT in 11th grade, I get the results back, and they say, Tom, 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 uh, you did really well in verbal. You, you could be a journalist, actually. Um, but uh, you have a problem with fractions and right angles. A little problem with math. It then takes me to a practice site just for fractions and right angles. Just for my exact one. Doesn't waste any time on my screen. If I do well there, it takes me to another site that says, Tom, you could be an AP map. I came from a family never heard of AP map. I could be an AP map. Yeah, you could be an AP map. If I do well, it takes me to another site that offers 180 college scholarships. Last year, 3 million American kids got free PSAT and SAT prep on this intelligent algorithm, enabling them to learn faster. Now I'm going to make you a bet. I'm going to bet none of you have ever heard of any of this. And that's because you were following our last election, where Bernie Sanders' big idea to help American workers was to tear down our big banks. 
Donald Trump's big idea was to tear down Hillary Clinton. And Hillary Clinton's big idea was to direct you to her website, www.hillaryclinton.com. In fact, there's massive innovation going on on the pipeline of education to work, and nobody is telling anybody. In fact, there's so much innovation there that nothing has to be invented. Whatever you can think of, somebody's already doing it. It just needs to be shared and scaled.